Hello boys and girls, we're here again. I wanted to share with you some of my thoughts on car dealership, uh, service centers, um, and repair facilities. Um, I'm not saying all are the same way, but I think majority are in that you cannot necessarily trust their work. Um, now there may be a few out there doing things properly. Uh, specifically, what I'm here to talk about today is a, an experience I had um, with you know, in this case, I have Goodyear tires that I bought and it comes with free rotation of the tires. Um, so I went back after yesterday's visit to check that they torqued the uh, lug nuts to the proper spec. Now, not everybody's familiar with this, but the manufacturer has a specification on the majority of the bolts that are uh, on your vehicle. And the lug nuts for the wheels are one of the more pertinent ones, in my opinion, in that it keeps your wheel on. And that's a safety concern, right? So in Mazda's case, for the Mazda CX-9, they have a torque spec of 80 to 108 foot-pounds of torque. Um, when I checked these today, now granted, this torque wrench only goes up to 150 foot-pounds, which covers majority of the bolts on any vehicle, in my opinion. 150 foot-pounds, it was still clicking, meaning it was torqued at a higher spec than that amount. So, what does this mean? Well, it can create some problems down the road, in my opinion. And this shop knows that I've specified that I want hand tools to be utilized and not an impact wrench. An impact wrench, now most shops uh, probably use pneumatic or air tools, not like this uh, lithium ion uh, rigid, but they're just torquing them, they're torquing the one lug nut to whatever you know that wrench will go to and then they're coming over to the next one expecting that wheel to somehow give in order to get it tight well if this is as tight as it can be I, I wonder if this is able to get um, you know a full uniform torque spec and you know some of the shops use these what they refer to as torque sticks uh, in theory they're a replacement for the torque wrench um, I don't believe in that either. I, I think you still have the same issue where you're, you're zipping this on and now you're coming over here and you're creating an issue. So at, at 150 plus, whatever that torque is, which I don't know, it's beyond uh, the 150. If I'm on the side of the road and I have a flat, I may have a lot of issues or my wife may have a lot of issues trying to get this wheel off to change it to, to the spare tire. Um, so now you're calling a tow service. Um, in addition, I feel that this can potentially, probably not, but potentially it could warp your, uh, your rim. Um, you know, I'm not an automotive expert, but I've turned wrenches for a lot of years. I just choose not to do some of my work now because I'm older, you know, and you kind of get out of that phase, uh, at least some of us do. But the rotors for your brakes, I think that's the biggest issue. I, I think when you over torque these with the impact wrench, you have a tendency to warp those rotors. Um, if it's not immediate, it's down the road, maybe 100, 200, 300 miles, when you start putting heat into these rotors that have been warped out of position. Um, and now you have a pulsating brake pedal and you have to spend a bunch of money to get new rotors on your vehicles prematurely. I think they're doing a disservice to us. And so I thought I'd take a moment of your time just to show you uh, what I think is a potential uh, solution to this. You know, I'm probably still going to go to this shop to have them rotate because I don't have a lift. And for me to go around, as nice as this aluminum uh, jack might be uh, from Harbor Freight, uh, it's still a pain, you know. And keep in mind, if you use a, a jack, you want to use the safety equipment like wheel chocks. You don't want your vehicle to roll away on you or a little one. But of course, uh, and jack stands, of course. Um, I guess what I would recommend, you know, still have the shop do it. Still specify that they utilize uh, this type of socket, if you will. This is a, a lug nut socket. It's got plastic on the ex exterior and plastic on the interior insert. This helps uh, alleviate or eliminate some of the scuffing on these nice wheels. Um, I've had not one, but two new vehicles in which my wheels have been scuffed by dealerships or um, this last one was a dealership, but not the one I bought the car from. 
And you know, it gets tiring to spend money and uh, on a new vehicle and have somebody else booger it up when you're paying them good money to do it. Um, so this also is from Harbor Freight. Not that I'm, you know, trying to tell you that Harbor Freight's the end all be all. In fact, it's probably not. But for me and my limited usage, uh, the dollar amounts seem to make sense, and I've had good, good success with some of their tools. Um, this kit is about thirty-six bucks. Uh, I think after the 25% off, and it's a pretty good deal. Uh, that might be before the 25%, I'm, I apologize. But what I recommend, moving forward, if you have a shop or do any kind of work, whether the wheels are removed, uh, the lug nuts are touched, it's to double check their work. Now I know these are over 150 foot pounds of torque. So what do I wanna do? Well, while it's still on the ground, I wanna loosen these up just a bit and then retorque them. Should do it. Now, I've already got this set at 100 foot pounds. Now, one of the things, if you buy a torque wrench, you do not want to leave it set at any given uh, value for any great length amount of time. You know, you don't want to put it put in your tool chest in this fashion. You always want to bring it down to the zero, uh, otherwise it can affect the uh, the spring tension and create uh, false values on your torque. So I've got a set of 100 foot-pounds. I figure between 80 and 108, that's a good value. And what you want to do is uh, a cross stitch pattern. I like to use an extension, actually. Get my hands away from the vehicle. Now, one of the things the shop mentioned is that um, after I brought it back to them to point out what I thought was an error in their part is that it was beyond the 150 because I had the vehicle on the ground. I didn't have it up in the air. Well, everything's taught me over the years that you torque the, the wheels while it's on the ground for the t final torque spec. Uh, they're trying to suggest that the ground was somehow putting this, um, you know, lat latitudinal type tor torque on the lug nuts or uh, pressure on the lug nuts, which didn't make any sense to me. Um, you can put in the comments what your feelings are on any of the things that I'm mentioning in this video. But um, I, I feel they're full of hot air, personally. Now there's a reason I'm not telling you the specific shop. Uh, truth be told, they're a national chain, but yet I think they're all owned by individuals. You know, it's like a franchise. And so you just, you gotta kind of be mindful of these things, but yet, um, you know, get to know where your shop is and double check the work to some degree. So what I'm doing now is just snugging up things. I'm doing a star pattern, if you will. And I'm just gonna snug things up. Now this one, I don't know that I got completely loose, but we'll see if uh, 100 foot pounds will even loosen it up. Okay, it did. So your, your loosening torque is always a lower spec and you're tightening. So here we're gonna snug them up more, doing the cross hatch. Hear that click? That means I'm at the spec that needs to be. And then I just double check everything, right? So this wheel should be good to go. At least they didn't booger up this wheel, as far as I can tell. Um, I thought this would be a helpful um, video to cover because I think all too often people trust their shops a little too much. And, um, you know, hopefully you can find a good shop, but my experience has not been the case. Uh, if, if I were uh, 
I had more time, I would just do all my own work. But in this case, I just double check and call them out when need be. Well, thank you very much for watching and uh, we'll see you next time. Uh, don't be cruel in the comments, uh, but yet, we'll see you next time. Take care.